This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including all them bones, Mike Akins, Norm Fazekas, and our new patron, William. On this episode of DTNS, Microsoft introduces new hardware without Panos Panay. Apple's leather alternative, Fine Woven, is not getting rave reviews. And allow the robot to help you at Las Vegas' new Sphere Event Center. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, September 21st, 2023, from Studio Mars. I'm Sarah Lane. From Columbus, Ohio, I'm Rob Dunwood. And from your nation's capital, your boy, Big Chris Ashley. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Chris Ashley, are you from the nation's capital or are you from the DMV? Well, they're one and the same. Are they? DC, Maryland, Virginia, yeah. See, I don't know. I don't know. People who no. live over there have feelings about these sorts of things. Yeah, no, there's definitely uh, a lot of feelings because there's certain areas that are not uh, considered to be part of DMV, even though they're mm. in Maryland, Virginia, <laughs> or DC, and they get real bad out of shape. Like, why we're we not included? <laughs> well, we all we all are a team on the show today. So let's talk about some tech, starting with the quick hits. The Wall Street Journal sources say that Apple spent billions of dollars developing a new modem chip for the new iPhone 15 lineup in an effort to cut ties with chip maker Qualcomm. However, the new chip reportedly was slow, prone to overheating, and its circuit board was so big it would have taken up half of an iPhone, making it kind of impossible to use. Apple CEO Tim Cook reportedly said in 2018 to design and build a modem chip to his team challenges poor communication and manager splits over how design uh, the design of those chips rather than buy them cause delays and setbacks leading to unrealistic goals and unmet deadlines basically the project was shelved Cisco, a leading manufacturer of networking equipment and software and services vendor, has agreed to buy cybersecurity firm Splunk for $28 billion and its biggest ever deal um, up to um, it, up to its biggest deal to this point. And it wants to do this to capitalize on the rising use of artificial intelligence. Combined, Cisco and Splunk will become one of the world's largest software companies and will accelerate Cisco's business transformation to more recurring revenue, a joint statement said. Cisco offered $157 in cash for each share of Splunk, representing a 31% premium on the company's last closing price. If you are a parent of a child who may have made some in-app purchases in Fortnite without your permission, or even with your permission, but you have, you, uh, you, you regret the decision, you can now claim a refund. This follows a $245 million settlement, which was finalized back in March after the U.S. Federal Trade Commission accused Fortnite developer Epic Games of tricking users into making unwanted purchases. The deadline to apply for a refund is January 7th, 2024, and filers have to be at least 18 years of age. So if you're a parent, legal guardian, or someone else who, you know, has uh, experienced this, now's the time. The 10-day MGM Resorts computer shutdown, which started two Sundays ago due to a cyber attack that affected hotel and restaurant reservations, credit card processing, room keys, and more, has come to an end. We're pleased that all of our hotels and casinos are operating normally, the Las Vegas-based company posted on X. Experts said the attacks exposed critical cybersecurity weaknesses at MGM and Caesars, who were also hacked but paid a $15 million ransom to have its systems restored. YouTube today announced a couple things. First, Dream Screen, which is the new feature coming to its short form video platform called Shorts, that will let users create an AI generated video or image background just by typing in what they want to see. At the company's live event made on YouTube Thursday morning, YouTube CEO Neil Mohan used the example of a panda drinking coffee and then the image appeared on screen. They probably went through that a couple of times before the announcement, but anyway. YouTube also an, uh, uh, announced AI creator tools to find music for videos and dubs to its creator music feature, which the company announced last year. Creators can now... Uh 
who'd already use creator music to search for songs or a specific artist or a music genre that they wanted to use in a video. Now they'll be able to get that with a little help from AI friends. And if you get the Beatles reference, thank you in advance. So before we get into Microsoft's big hardware announcements, let's spend just a little more time on our ongoing saga, accessories that people do not like. Today, that category belongs to Apple's new fine woven iPhone cases and accessories. In the words of The Verge, Apple's new fine woven iPhone cases and accessories are bad, like really bad. I've been puzzling over them for the past week, looking at them from different angles, picking them up, setting them down petting them seven days later i still can't make sense of them and i have no other choice but to say out loud fine works are very <laughs> fine i should say fine woven <laughs> is very bad i the mean somebody bad. somebody worked on fine woven yeah oh uh damning words from the verge uh okay so just a reminder if you're kind of confused fine woven is apple's new fabric option that you'll find on iphone 15 cases air tag holders magsafe wallets uh, uh, Apple Watch uh, um, bands, replacing leather, which the company said at its iPhone event just last week, it would no longer use. Apple said, we're done with leather. Apple calls fine woven a luxurious and durable micro twill. It costs $59 for an iPhone case, $35 for an AirTag holder, $99 for an Apple Watch band. It is the same price as leather, so expectations were high, right? At least, you know, you would assume that it would be comparable to what you were interested in. Not everybody hates it, but boy, do a lot of people hate it. Definitely getting a lot of backlash from folks who think luxurious is not the word you would use for this price. Now, Apple always gets attention for a mess. Sounds like this might be a mess to a lot of people, but let's all think about the last accessory that we bought that kind of sucked. Yeah, Chris, I'll Chris, go first because please I, do. It, it took a second for me because I was like, I know I bought something that I absolutely in the end didn't like. And I remember I was trying to, you know, reduce some of the, the uh, bulk on my head when I was doing the podcast. And I was looking at a Bluetooth transmitter that would hook into the, uh, the stereo, I mean, to the uh, mixer and then uh, into my ear. And I'm telling you, I might as well had put the mixer on top of my head as close as I had to be to the transmitter <laughs> for this thing to work. Oh, it was man. a hot mess. It just it just sounded terrible. It was the delay on it was probably a good full two, three seconds uh, between the audio. So it was just absolutely such a disappointment. I had such high hopes for this thing. So that's probably my biggest disappointment from an accessory standpoint. Rob, do you have do you have a particular mess that stands I, I, out? I do. And this didn't affect me directly, but it affected my daughter. So my, my daughter is a big Apple user. Um, I've been getting her MacBooks since I believe she's like in the seventh or eighth grade. So a few years ago, I bought her the uh, an Apple mouse and it was cute. It was, it was really, really nice looking and everything. But ergonomically, when you plugged it in to charge it up, when you plug the USB cord into it, it you couldn't use the mouse anymore. So I just remember, you know, she's, she's got this brand new mouse. She's working on a paper for school and she comes to me and other pet dad, my, my mouse is dead. I can't charge it up. I need to use your computer. I need to use your mouse. And I'm like, well, just plug it in. You can just be able to use it. It's like you can't, when you plug it in, you physically can't slide the mouse anymore. And that's always stuck with me. I thought that, well, that was a, probably a big miss from an Apple standpoint, because why would you actually put the charging port at the bottom of the mouse where you can no longer use it while it's charging up? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I will say this is not one product, uh, specifically, but I will say of a product line that I've had the most problems with Amazon basics. Really? Oh yes. Interesting. I cannot tell you how many times I, and, and maybe it's what I'm buying, right? Uh, you know, I'm frequently buying like ethernet to USB or ethernet to USB two, or, you know, or, uh, you know, a variety of kind of daisy chain things mm -hmm. when I run out of ports on my Mac mini kind sure. of thing, you know, looking at my, my situation here. That stuff, I cannot tell you how many times someone else has been like, I don't know what's wrong. Everything was fine until today. And I'm like, did you buy it from Amazon Basics? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's what happened. I don't know. I don't know why. You know, maybe bad batches. That stuff happens too. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 would be my. You know, I proceed with caution anytime I either buy something like that, even though it's cheaper, or 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 tell somebody else to buy something like that because it's cheaper. I have gone through two of the uh, the of their cords for my camera. But that was I'm chalking the first one up to my fault, and then we'll see what happens on this one. And the only other thing that I have, which is actually held up well, is their uh, their uh, their monitor arm seems to be holding up pretty well so far. Although I'm starting to see where my new monitor is a little bit heavy for it. Well, if you want to stay up uh, to date in the fast moving world of artificial intelligence, we definitely talk about that a lot on DTNS. But you know who else does it really well? The show AI named this show. It launched during DTNS Experiment Week back in August, and it's great. Each week, Tristan Juntra and Tasia Custody wade through the hype and the doomsday to keep you informed about all the latest in AI news and how it can affect your life for the better. Catch it at AINamedTheShow.com. All right, let's talk about Microsoft because Microsoft had a hardware event today in New York City, unveiling quite a few things, but let's start with its latest convertible laptop, the Surface Laptop Studio 2. Keeps the previous 14.4 inch display, has some new bells and whistles though for $2,000 to start. It runs on Intel's i7H class 13th gen chips. Pricier versions have an NVIDIA RTX 4050 or RTX 4060 GPU inside. Also has an Intel neural processing unit, also known as NPU, which Microsoft says is the first Intel NPU in a Windows computer. Up to two terabytes of storage, 64 gigs of RAM if you upgrade. Also has two USB-C ports, one USB-A port, a micro SD card reader. People always love those. And the Mm -hmm. Surface Slim Pen 2. All right. Who's buying this? So if I was in the uh, market for a laptop, I'd probably look at this one because actually I had to serve. I've had a ton of Surface devices. Um, I had the original uh, uh, Surface Pro. I had the Surface Pro laptop. Um, the one thing I would have to double check on on them is the uh, I had a consistent issue with heat, and uh, to the point mm. where I, you know, their warranty was great, so they replaced it. But the battery was behind the monitor, and it got yeah, you know, it just started getting so hot that it started to explode and separate the screen from there. But other than that, they replaced it. Um, I had it on two different machines, but other than that, I, I mean, everything about this thing was awesome. And uh, so this one looks really cool. I always um, I like the way that the monitor kind of flips down with the with the hinge system, like half of the monitor is the hinge system that that looked really slick, too. Um, so I, I would if I was looking at a new laptop, I would definitely be taking a look at this bad boy. Yeah, th- th- these are nice looking laptops. Um, and they start at 2000, which doesn't sound that bad, but when you start configuring these bad boys up, they can, they can get expensive pretty quick. So uh, don't, don't think you're getting this. It's like some significant discount as to a comparable, uh, MacBook pro per se. Uh, you, you aren't, they, they these things, um, are not inexpensive, but, this is also, but they are know, really a gaming it, laptop, right? Yeah, For this a is a gaming people. laptop. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of hardware in it, so it's going to cost. But, uh, like I said, it's, it's not, you know, it's no longer, are we in the days of when you can buy a Mac? Uh, or, or, or buy you know two PCs for the buy, price you can buy a Mac. This this is this is well priced. Yeah, uh, is anybody still falling for that? Uh, the start at price, the you know, what we also known as the Okie Doke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Okie Doke. I mean, I don't listen. Uh, the only time that this actually gets me is when I am in the market for a new smartphone. You know, I'm an iPhone uh, user, so, you know, but it, but it's all the same. It's like starting at, you go two grand. Well, okay. All right. But like, what's the laptop that you really want? More like 35. Right. Right. But I wouldn't go that high. I, I um, but 
man, the, I, I love the way the this thing looks, and I I like the way they had uh, actually sculpted the bottom because you see that uh, it it actually is almost like a bezel, which which I'm believing because it looks like there was a lot of vents there that they changed the way this works to kind of address the heat uh things that that you would see on this bad boy so that would when i was looking at it that's what i was looking for is to see what changes they made mm -hmm. uh because it's um to the overall to the outside of it so some other cool news that came out of microsoft today was that they announced a unified version of its ai companion co-pilot experience that will be built into windows 11 and as the company says seamlessly available across all the apps and experiences you use most including office 365 windows the edge browser and bing microsoft consumer chief marketing officer yusef Mehdi described copilot as a handshake between you and technology available when you need it and out of the way when you don't this I love that way of cool. describing like, hey, if you don't want AI, we're not going to make you use it, but mm -hmm. it's built into everything that you might want to use it for. I think that's actually a pretty good uh, strategy, you know, for the company, for everyone who's sort of like, well, how is this going to help me? Um, I, you know, I'm in that camp of I still don't really know how all of this helps me day to day. But I like the opportunity to have it, uh, you know, at the ready, just in case. Yeah. So when I was watching this and I always approach a lot of these announcements with the, OK, this is a huge gimmick. But one of their uh, examples actually resonated with me. And that was the summary email one, because uh, I have definitely been a part of coming coming in late to an email chain. That's like six or seven long emails deep. And, you know, when you're like trying to catch up and you should figure out what's going on so you know how to make a decision to move forward, having the ability to use the AI to say, hey, summarize this email for me and give me the key points so that you can quickly get up to speed on a topic that, you know, may require um, a, a pretty precise uh, response. So that is when I started, I took a step back and started looking at it like, okay, now that that is something that would definitely resonate and work for me. So then translating it into personal life, like where you're trying to maybe start a new business or, um, you know, learn a new topic and you've taken some notes down, being able to tell the AI, hey, summarize what I just wrote down and spit it back to me so you can, so you can kind of get it ingrained in. Both, you know, pretty, pretty significant use cases as far as I'm concerned. So this, this was kind of really turned out to be rather interesting to me. Yeah, I fully expected this. Um, if for no other reason than, you know, Google just recently announced that BARD is now part of Gmail and, you know, and it's Google Docs, Google Drive uh, applications. And not that Microsoft just started working on this, but you knew that they had to do something to make sure that they're not going to be losing pace to their biggest competitor. So, so all of this AI in their products makes absolute sense to me. Yeah, I haven't messed around with it. I've been hesitant to, but I may start now. I just feel like I can't find the use case where I, you know, wake up and say, ah, oh, thank God for AI. I kind of just, <laughs> I, I, I'm still just, I, I'm like, humans do human things, especially for what we're doing right now. I'm not sure that AI uh, can can do my work for me. But uh, if you do have thoughts on that, uh, we always like to hear them. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Oh, but that's not all, everybody. Microsoft also announced the Surface Hub 3. That's the big one that you see in big office conference rooms. Now supporting smart rotation and portrait mode, letting users physically rotate the screen to a vertical orientation if they so desire, while the layout updates automatically. We got two sizes to choose from, 50 or 85 inches. So the, these are big. Designed, again, for conference rooms or, yeah, I don't know, some sort of a replacement for a TV and a monitor if you have that sort of situation. The Surface Hub 3 runs Microsoft Teams on Windows. We'll integrate Copilot in the future as well. So that's all kind of fun. And if you're saying, sounds great, what's the price? It's $9,000. Yeah, definitely clearly for uh, business applications. Uh, yeah. I have personally have actually had the opportunity to use um, use this multiple times. And I'll be honest with you, it's actually pretty awesome. Um, it has an integrated. Yeah, I've uh, heard that too. Yeah, it, the, the integrated camera that it has that actually sits on the on the desk and then can, you know, throw it follows the, the speaker around the room. Um, that it was pretty cool. Um, 
you know, the way you can just click directly on the screen on some of them and, you know, and, and, and facilitate, you know, quick taking quick notes on maybe you're on a planning session and they're actually pretty cool. Now it's not obviously not practical for a regular person, but, uh, um, the only thing is, uh, is the landscape support. I'm like, unless you plan on permanently leaving it that way. I mean, it is a massive, massive screen and it it's, uh, you know, obviously with so much built into it, a lot heavier than just a regular TV screen. So that's kind of interesting to me that they did that. I mean, I suppose if you were, let's say, you know, we're post pandemic, but uh, teams are remote to the point where something like this could work really well in a conference room. If you were going through a variety of slides, for example, leaked Microsoft slides that the FTC uh, uh, got a handle of, uh, you know, maybe they look better in portrait or landscape mode. Uh, you yeah. know, it's kind of nice to have the option, right? Oh, yeah. The option there is pretty good. But when I hear something like that, like a feature that's like portrait or landscape, I'm envisioning a active rotation of a screen even though i suspect that it was just like maybe like a kiosk mode you signing somebody up or something you're yeah in that you're more leaving it in that direction but uh i don't you know so that's that's just all the way my brain works what do you think rob um i see this being used to play massive and epic battles of tic-tac-toe in conference room <laughs> by people with. but don't hate that idea but do you know there's more Microsoft announced more. So for those of the for those of you that are straight up looking for a thin as possible laptop that isn't nine thousand dollars, Microsoft unveiled the Surface Laptop Go Three, which the company says will run up to fifteen hours on a single charge. The Go Three has a twelve point four inch touchscreen with a three to two ratio, a resolution of fifteen hundred thirty six by ten twenty four, and three hundred and twenty nits of brightness. Perhaps more importantly, Microsoft claims it's eighty eight percent faster than the original model with a twelfth gen Intel Core i five CPU and Intel Iris Z graphics with up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 gigs of storage 512 in the commercial version. Other fun specs include a 720p HD front-facing camera, fingerprint power button, Dolby Audio, a USB-C 3.2 port, a USB-A 3.1 port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a Surface Connect port. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 rounds this out. You can get this on October 3rd for $799. I'm actually really interested in this one. Um, yeah, this, this is no a, kidding. This is, a eight, this is the price of not even the most expensive iPad Pro. This is like the, you know, like the, the low end or middle range iPad Pro. And this is a full functioning laptop that is also a full functioning tablet. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in this particular device. Yeah, one interesting thing that I caught that they did is they added the uh, fingerprint reader to the uh, to the power button. And the reason why I find that to be significant is because I, I as a person who docks my laptops all the time, um, I don't get to use the camera for facial recognition for login. So being able to just but I can access the keyboard by reaching underneath my uh, table here and uh, being able to log in and use that. So that, I I like that they added that piece in there. And this thing looks great. I'm a fan of the lap, the, the go line. I have two sur regular Surface Go's um, as well and was looking at getting the, the laptop for my daughter um, before we just but they didn't have it in stock. So we had to get something quick for school. Yeah, I mean, for this for this price and everything that's, you know, built into the price, you know, in the uh, in the stock model, so to speak, uh, this is nice. I it's it's real nice. I I I would like one. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. looks really good. And, you know, they, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever owned a Surface, but very sleek devices. Very, they just look good. They feel good. Um, always been happy with the ones that I've had. Yeah, this this is a this is a really keen device for eight hundred bucks. It's you know, I mean, j just a base model or eight hundred is a really nice eight hundred dollar laptop slash slash tablet. So this is a good one. But there's more. So uh, just a few days before the hardware event, Microsoft Chief Product Officer Panos Panay announced that he was leaving Microsoft, and the timing seems significant. We now know that Panay is leaving Microsoft for Amazon, and insider sources say this was due to recent budget and staff cuts, canceled products, and potential reorganization in his unit at Microsoft. Panay reportedly was unhappy with the recent changes in the Windows Plus devices division, and the move to Amazon was not unexpected. So here's what's really interesting about this. He's moving over to 
to Amazon. I believe the uh, the the division there is Lab uh, 126. That's where they make like the Kindle, where they make the Amazon Echo. He's moving there because they are actually. Uh, you know, it's been reported that those employees are unhappy, a little bit disgruntled because of the cuts that have been happening there, the products that have been slashed that have been happening there. So they're bringing him in to try to turn this all around. And my gut tells me if he does anything at Amazon, like what he did with Surface in about two and a half, three years, Amazon will be cooking it with gas with their products division. I hope so. I mean, as somebody who's very much in the Amazon ecosystem, as far as the smart home and smart devices in general, I, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, we, we've been hearing for the better part of two years, like, you know, the whole smart, you know, a name, you know, who I'm talking about, you know, Amazon had hoped for more, uh, but you know, people just, keep asking her what the weather is and not using all the features that, <laughs> you know, that was supposed to be part of, you know, the uh, modern lifestyle going forward. Um, for a, it sounds like quite beloved person uh, who's been at Microsoft and certainly a surface evangelist, um, uh, Panay, to come to Amazon. This has obviously been in the works. It's not like he just quit the job. Uh, uh, quit uh, Microsoft uh, two days ago, but it's a pretty big deal. Um, and I wonder what really, I mean, I wonder what it says for Microsoft, but more importantly, I wonder what it says for Amazon to, to, to spark a little life into this whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, a huge loss for Microsoft because uh, I, I, you know, I, I watched the original event, and I, while I was intrigued, it was the passion and the uh, the excitement that uh, Panos Panay had for launching the product. I mean, this cat skateboarded on a surface into the into the announcement. So <laughs> there you go. And I can promise you that I've, you know, I've watched maybe one or two Amazon events. Never once was I ever seen anything that I was like, oh, I'm excited. I got to check that out at the very least and most likely uh, purchase it. So just even if he brings that aspect to the table and he will probably get that cachet at least automatically for the first event that he's a part of launching uh, where he'll bring more eyeballs on just because he knows how to talk about one. Um, they're already going to get some wins off of that. So I, I don't know how I, I it always surprises me when companies let uh, you know, so solid talent go out the door, but you know, it, it, sometimes they just, you know, they just get a little bit ahead of themselves. I think sometimes the companies have no choice. Uh, they, they wrote it in the sand for themselves. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, speaking of the sands, uh, actually not, but in the general vicinity, the MSG sphere in Las Vegas, if you haven't heard of it, it's a big old sphere. It, Sounds exactly what it sounds like. It has unveiled a robot called Aura, a humanoid robot that will permanently live in the arena when the arena launches later this month. The arena is for events, concerts, uh, you know, a variety, a variety of things where you're inside truly a very large sphere. Uh, in fact, five Aura robots will greet guests and be on hand to answer questions like how to get somewhere within the sphere. Aura has voice story and recognition and can focus on one person speaking directly in front of it at a time, even if there are a bunch of people around, and use, uh, uses AI advances as it learns more about humans through guest interactions, which the company says will roll out slowly. Human lab technicians will be on hand as well. That's not creepy at all. Not I mean, at all. not in the slightest. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We talked about this a little bit on GDI the other day. Uh, I think the whole Vegas thing is the right place to try out things like this. Uh, I, I, I uh, yeah, I would I agree with you there. Yeah, but if one yeah. of them looks up and says, "Run!" It's it's a wrap. We're done. Yeah, or if you see a bunch of them start heading for like a. a was it a storage storage units off off in the background? <laughs> you see all the robots running for storage units. Yeah, you know you're in trouble. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it'll be it'll be interesting uh, to see how people who actually interact with uh, the robot either say this is the best or this is not. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Report back to us. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Chris Ashley. 
Report back to the show as soon as possible because we love having you. Uh, in the meantime, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, you can definitely check us out on uh, Barbecue and Tech. Uh, at barbecue and tech and barbecue and tech.com. We have some really cool recipes and, uh, um, smoke smoking going on this, uh, past week. And then of course me, Rob and Mr. Rod Simmons doing our best to talk tech on SMR podcast. So two, two places you can check us out for sure. Yeah. I will actually go ahead and do this. This is the first time since Chris has known me. I think we met in 2007 or eight. Thank you for coming on the show. I know he's recording it and it will be used in a clip at some point because that <laughs> never happened. That was, you heard it here, people. But, Rob thanked Chris. I was did lovely. thank him. But you know what? Oh, folks, stick around. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet, where Wired's Megan attempts to break down if captures are more about making humans behave like bots or less about filtering bots by testing if we're human. Oh, gotta love a captcha. Reminder, everybody, whether you're a robot or a human, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday because we do it live. 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC is where it all goes down. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back tomorrow with Shannon Morse joining us. Don't miss it. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>